You have heard stories about sentience, the Orokin, a Warframe's immortality, and the Warframe's achieving sentience overall, but few have really delved deep into the heart that tells us about the story of the God King in Arrows. In times of peace and war, desperation still always finds its way, and this time, the Orokin once again revealed their true potential. While there were those who volunteered to be in the Orokin's elite army and serve as subjects, there were many who wouldn't. The Empire's demands outweighed their military status, and they needed more people for their military. The Empire already saw great destruction approaching. To increase the numbers and the masses, the Orokin started abducting individuals from their homeworlds. Civilizations, colonies, male and female, the Orokin took them all. They would send an army of Dax soldiers, all to be led by Warframes, and in this time, the Warframes were beginning to become the pillar, the forerunners of the Empire. And as a little spoiler for anyone who hasn't played the Sacrifice Quest yet, these were already skilled and powerful Dax soldiers, all just covered in hardened infested skin. One of the groups they sent on this particular mission was the Narrows, and due to the powers of the Orokin, the frame would come in the name of the Empire and take anyone they see fit. They were a menace to any civilization. Dwelling at the highest peak on the moon, they were referred to as the Golden Skymen. One day, a child was amongst the group of those who were abducted. This became the very breaking point of his control. Inaros was filled with concern, and he defied the orders of his masters. This was the first time he achieved sentience. How could anyone take a child, and perhaps he saw what would happen to them? His actions became part of the wave of warframes like Rhino going mad in the lore. Inaros decided he would take the child back to his family, but no good deed will ever go unnoticed. Inaros was never going to be stopped. And like an omen of destruction, the Warframe tore into the heart of a legion. Hand and feet, it became the embodiment of rage. Everyone he faced was given a deep usher into the afterlife. It was perhaps the biggest battle he ever fought. In time, Inaros returned the child and brought him back to his people. Knowing that the Orokin will be persistent and will return, Inaros presided over them and became the protector of the colony. It would destroy every weapon the Orokin unleashed against him. That was until the Orokin sent the infested. Due to its volatile nature, it was very hard and it was a difficult plague to vanquish, a hard element to take. Inaros fought in an unseen godlike manner. He became vengeance, he became hate, he was enraged, and he showed his godlike nature. He wiped out the infested horde using a sandstorm, and at the end of the battle, the people were safe, but Inaros was badly beaten. He died saving the colonists. This was his own path to the afterlife, and to show respect to his deed, the colonists separated his body into different vessels to make sure that no grave robbers will take what is left of him, and they erected a mighty statue in his honor. Inaros achieved sentience, defied his masters, he was brutal, so powerful, the Orokin had to send infestation after him. But what do you think about Inaros and the quest of this Warframe defying the Orokin, him achieving sentience and being a god to many? Feel free to share your thoughts down below and let me know what you think. Thanks for watching this video, hope you find it interesting, I'll see you in the next one.